most affected, where global trade has failed to make an impact, there is a new initiative uh, to raise living standards amongst the world's poorest, giving people cash payments with no strings attached. It's called Give Directly and was started by economists from Harvard and MIT. It currently operates in eight African nations, the United States and Yemen. And the organization has just appointed Rory Stewart, the UK's former Secretary of State for International Development, its president. He joins me live now. Thank you very much, Rory, for joining us here on the program. I mean, we talk about this uh, being, being something new, uh, but it's not entirely revolutionary. Just tell us how it works. So, yes, as you say, Yelda, in a sense, giving people uh, money is one of the oldest things in the world. But as an approach to international development, it's been hiding in plain sight barely one or two percent of the international development assistance worldwide is given in the form of cash often what happens is that people will turn up in a community in a rural village for example and experts of different sorts will decide what the villagers need often at quite a great deal of expense they will decide whether people should be given a bicycle or a cow or whether their house should be repaired and of course the revolutionary thing about cash is that it gives dignity and freedom to the individual to choose what they really need. And the very poorest people in the world really are immensely thoughtful and responsible with money, partly because they've been living so close to the extreme poverty line for so long. So our experience has been that a relatively small amount of money from Western standards can transform people's lives so much more rapidly and efficiently than many traditional aid programs. Rory, how do you monitor it? Because there has to be a level of, of accountability. I, I mean, as you say, uh, the world's poorest are, are responsible with money, but you do have situations where if there's domestic violence, for example, and, and the, the aid or the, the amount of cash needs to go to a woman, how do we, you ensure that it reaches the right people? To, to do that, we have field teams on the ground and we have completely separate audit teams who operate without anyone uh, in the field teams being aware of their identity. They go in and they check in the villages, they talk to households, they do everything they can to monitor the way that that money has been used and to raise any concerns. But actually, to be honest, though, after almost 10 years of operations, we found that in the majority of cases, it's used very, very well and that everybody in the household understands generally that this is an extraordinary opportunity to turn your life around. Uh, we could be in cases of extreme poverty. In Rwanda, I saw us supporting a family that was living on $3 a month. And a cash gift in that case of $700 allowed them to completely redo their house, get a cow, dig a latrine, connect to electricity, connect to government health insurance. All of this stuff done for a fraction of the cost which a normal agency or NGO would be able to deliver. I, I mean, you're currently working in a number of African uh, countries. I, I see Yemen uh, as well as the United States. Uh, what are you doing in the United States, for example? Because, I mean, you know, you can understand Yemen, for example, but, but what is required in the United States? Where are you looking and targeting the poorest communities? So in the United States, yes, we are working with the poorest communities in the United States. We're doing that with American donors who are particularly interested in reaching out. And we did it initially in response to the hurricanes in the United States, natural disasters, because one of the things we found in the United States is that people were delivering things to people who'd been affected by hurricanes, which were unsuitable for them. They would turn up, for example, um, with food when what they wanted was tents or turn up with tents when what they wanted was food. And often, not always, but in, often in these cases, there are markets functioning. And if you give people money, they're able to get what they need much more efficiently than a, a government organization can deliver.